so in the previous class we were learning about organizing right we are modular module is about staffing but we know organizing comes for the so certain aspects certain elements has to be studied here also right so we are we are learning we are learning about organizing so in organizing we are we learned about what is global organizing right so what is global organizing global organizing means we are working on a global scale right we know the result of organizing is organization so the result of global, global organizing will be global organization okay so global organizing will lead to a global organization and now what is a global organization a global organization is one with the international presence okay they have the scope they have the presence they have the membership on a international scale okay? they are multi national right they have offices they have branches in multinational so they are basically multinational companies mncs okay uh, one uh, global organization we can say is uh, un united nations okay so it's a non profit like organization but we have like the pepsico the coca cola right all these companies are multinational companies right the samsung the, the apple right everyone they are all mncs right? we have an app the story in kia right in kochi we have so uh so it was basically global organize, organizing means we are forming an alliance with different countries because we have what we have to uh, understand is every country will have its own rules regulations procedures and culture so we need to accept that we need to work within the limits okay so that their organizing comes into play and now what are the goals Whenever, whenever we are organizing in a global manner, it is first and foremost is profit. Okay, what whether what we are doing is profitable or not. So profitability comes first. Then customer service. So we know he said right, our, uh, uh, our office will be in one country. Okay, head office will be in one country. Our production will be in another country. Right, and we are selling it all over the world. Okay? So whatever is the service which we are providing. It should reach everywhere uniformly. Okay, people should not complain that we are not providing good service. Okay, whether it's in the uh, Africa or whether it's in the uh, Middle East or US or anywhere. But if we have presence over there, if we have an office over there, we should be able to. If our product reaches there, then we should give them the best service. And for that, we again we need organizing. Right, people should be there to uh, remedy the mistakes right whatever is the grievance that should be solved so people should be present there so we need a proper organizing then comes customer retention so customer retention means uh, whether the customer comes back to our product like we said yesterday about the mobile phones right sometimes we have we we'll become brand loyal because they have provided us with good phones so whenever we are opting for the next or we are upgrading or we are changing the model we we'll go for that particular company system that becomes customer retention the customer is not leaving our company. Yes, they are. Uh, they, may, they may not be using the current phone, but they are going for the next phone, which is which our company is only providing. So customer retention. Again, we should be organizing our company or our, uh, our business such that we will be able to retain our customers. Okay. So for that, we should be able to. We should give them good resources. Good uh, service should be provided. First and foremost, best product should be provided. Right, we should provide the good product, and that too, it should be a uniform product. Right, cannot expect uh, a different taste for Coca Cola in uh, here in my Matano and different taste in different quality. Yes, it should be uniform because wherever we are having the the Coke, it should be having the same taste or same quality. We should be aiming for that, and we should be organizing our company in that such a manner that we can provide them with. Best quality wherever they are, right? So that we can retain our customers. Then comes growth again. So if we are providing good, we have good base, then we have more and more company, more and more country we can present. See, see, five years, ten years back, we know we didn't hear about uh, like KFCs, right? Now KFC is in our background. In Kannur, we are having KFC. Okay. Earlier we used to have to go to Bangalore or some uh, Kochi or somewhere. Now they are reaching to us. Well, they are growing, right? So growth is important. Then efficiency again, it should be efficiency can be 
uh, like uh, the production, efficiency in production, manufacturing, marketing, in all sectors, it should be efficient. Then uh, performance. Performance here, what we have to do, understand is we are not only opting for higher performance from the employee only, but management also. The management are also held responsible. Okay, so whenever we are organizing a global organization, we will be organizing in such a way that the management is also held responsible for performance. Okay, so if the company is failing, it's not only the uh, due to due to the employees, but the management also has a important role. So they should they are also held accountable. Okay? If the profit profit is decreasing, the management will also have to answer. Right? So that's that. Now we what we say about organizing or global organizing global organization to understand this a global organizing will lead to global organization the question might be global organizing global organization okay for the aim of a global organization is profitability customer service customer retention growth efficiency higher employee management and performance and similarly uh, the goals of global organizing will be to create an organization with these goals right clear Next topic was entrepreneurial organizing, right? Entrepreneurial organizing. So entrepreneurial organizing are those that promote the emergence and development of ideas from all members of the firm. Again, uh, entrepreneurial organizing will lead to an entrepreneurial organization. Okay, so entrepreneurial organizations are those that promote the emergence and development of idea from all members of the firm. Okay, so it's not a, a select few job, a select few job. Okay, everyone has to take part. Everyone can input. Everyone can give their two cents. Everyone can give their ideas to the company. So we are, we are, we are promoting. So we are promoting the emergence and development. Okay, promoting the development and emergence of good ideas. Right. So it makes it possible for the juniors and senior managers to attract the attention of decision makers. What happens in an entrepreneurial organization here? So both the manager at the senior level and the junior manager, he can also give out his idea, and that will be heard by the decision maker. It's not that he's there; uh, he's just giving his ideas, and no one is listening. No, in an entrepreneurial organization, we are organizing the organization in such a way that all the persons are heard. Okay, the decision maker will hear the ideas from the input from all the organizers. However, Smaller be his post, however, higher be, he be his post. Okay. Usually, what will happen is uh, being at the lowest end of the scale or being at the bottom level, our ideas may not be heard. But in an entrepreneurial organization, we have to organize it in such a way that all the employees' ideas, uh, the inputs are heard. Right? Clear? Yeah. That is about entrepreneurial organizing. So, entrepreneurial organizing will lead to an will lead to an Entrepreneurial organization, right? The next topic is management for manager inventory chart, right? So basically, uh, what 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 is the manager inventory chart? For the term itself, manager inventory chart. So the chart, it's a diagram. Okay, then inventory is about the numbers. Okay, and about manager. No, whose numbers are we taking? We are taking about manager. The manager inventory chart is an organization chart. And what was organization chart? Organization chart means uh, again, it's a chart which shows the line of decision making, right? How each person is related to one another. That's the organization chart. So it's a manager inventory chart. It's an organization chart of an unit. Okay, the unit the unit means of a uh, department. Okay, with Manager positions indicated and marked as the as to the chance of promotion of each person. Okay, so the most important thing that is marked in the manager inventory chart is that is which owner which owner managers can be or who and all can be promoted. Okay, so it can include details like it's it can or not, not it will can include details like age, year of employment, present position, duration of current posting, performance rating, strength and weaknesses. Position to which employee can be moved. Okay, these are the uh, things which can be included in the manager inventory chart. So, an example of manager inventory chart is this one. 
is we are having a controller right this is the department of control okay so in this department there have they have four major also on top there's a controller okay that may be a position okay, and then now we are having four different general managers and each under each general manager there are so under the first general manager we have five three three and two okay, under each manager there are so by looking at the in the chart itself we can know how many managers are there in the company we are getting the height of the numbers now what are dollar addition we getting addition we can get in this chart the numbers are years of years in that position has been marked so how many years each of these employees each of these managers have been working so we can see mr roy he is working in post accounting department under mr halim and he is having a uh, he is being in that position for Three years, right? So this data we got it, right? Now again, there's a legend under here, right? So the three black dots, the three black dots, it shows they are promotable now. Two black dots promotable in one year. A single black dot potential for promotion. Right? They are having an index over there. It will depend. So whenever you are, suppose you are making the chart, you can make it as a star, okay? Three star, okay? Circles instead of circles. You can dots. You can make it stuff. Okay, maybe rectangle. Maybe triangle. That will depend upon you. Okay. So by looking at this thing, we know who who and all can be promoted. Who and all can who has to be trained more or who has to be replaced. So according to this chart, Mr. Roy he is promotable now, right? And Mr. Lee yes, he has even though he is having eight years of service in that position, he is not working properly. So he has to be dismissed. We are getting an idea. Right from the chart itself. Okay, so what are the advantages of this chart? The advantage is the chart gives an overview of the staffing situation, like we saw. Right? The each general manager in each department, how many staffs are there? How many managers are there? There are five, three, three, two staffs. Right? Okay, we got an idea of the, we got an overview of the staffing situation. Right? Then managers who are ready for the promotion can now be easily identified. Again, with the rating system. We have, we were able to identify those who are those who can be promoted. Okay. The chart shows future internal supply of managers, right? Again, uh, we have a rating system, so we know in each department how many managers are there and whether they are promotable or not. Okay. Suppose we are having many managers in the department, but none of them are promotable right now. So if we have a higher opening, we will have, we'll be forced to take someone from the outside, right? We'll be have, we'll be forced to take a new approach right then uh, the managers who do not perform satisfactorily can be identified as need of training or replacement is indicated again it's not that we can only get the best it shows who and all can be promotable right can be promoted in the same way those managers who cannot be promoted those managers who has to be terminated okay? or those managers who can be who has to re-undergo training okay retrained Okay, these can these persons can be identified from the manager inventory chart, right? Then again, managers close to retirement can be identified, and preparations for their replacement can be made. Okay. So again, what happens is, uh, we know there are there are there's a manager who is about to retire. Okay, he may retire in two years, or he may retire in six months. So we know okay, if it is in a good organization, uh, we know he will be retiring in say, one year. Right, so we will be what 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 we have to do. We need to replace him. Right, we have to pr pr give a, give a new person his job. So he has to be trained. Okay, so we we'll say okay, we can identify who is the most capable to be to replace this person, okay. and he can be trained accordingly. Right? So managers who close to retirement can be identified okay. from this uh, because we are having services also, right? So we can identify them also who who and all are retirable. Sometimes what will happen is the person may not be ready to retire. Okay. Because as he is saying, he'll say, I'll be one more year, one more year like that. He will be pushing himself. Right? But we can we can identify who is who can be retired, who is about to retire. Okay? So whenever he retires, a new person should be on standby. Okay. Immediately he should be able to take his position. So we can train them. We can prepare them for their replacement. Right? And what were the disadvantages? It does not show the position to may be promoted. Uh, in the chart, it's only shown they are promotable or not. 
okay they are promotable they cannot be promoted any training like that we had a rating but to which position can they be promoted that's not clearly shown right so the data available on the chart are not sufficient to make a fair assessment okay so what you have to understand is the from the chart the purpose of the chart is to only show you okay to only indicate the scenario okay who and all can be promoted who can be who has to go under uh, training who has to be uh, dismissed they should give you an idea okay but you should not make a final decision based on that chart only you have to consider other factors also okay so chart is not ultimate okay the chart will give you an idea right so it is not complete because only a few uh, selected items are only considered there right but we had to consider other factors also it's not a complete solution but it will give it will point us it will give you the direction to move okay then again it takes time and effort to keep the chart up to date so the chart has to be constantly updated right so updated we have to see the performance we have. we will be having certain parameters so we had to look into the parameters and we had to constantly update so that will take uh, time and effort and top level managers may not share the charts to, with the others okay so what will happen is the managers who one might you know he might not be the one who has prepared it but he will keep it confidential for his eyes only okay so that will defeat the purpose because then only we will be if i know what is my if i have glance at the star okay, and shows i am not promotable right, right now so i can have a chance to improve myself I want promotions, right? Everyone wants promotion. Everyone wants to move up. So, he, without him sharing that to me, I may not know where I am standing. Yeah, I may think I am doing a very good job, but in the company as a whole, when I say it, I may not be up to the mark. So, uh, I I will it denies me the opportunity to improve. Okay, so that is a problem also, right? Because it, it, uh, he might not share it with me, right? Yeah. So the next topic is a selection or uh, matching the person with the job. Okay, how do we we set uh, the basics of staffing is right man for the right job. Okay, the so right man and right job. So how do we how do I or how do we place someone? Okay, how do we match a person with the job? So right man for the right job. So we need to identify what is the right job. And we need to identify the right man also. Okay. So the first step is job analysis. We need to identify the. We need to analyze the job. Okay. We need to understand the what is the job. So every job, okay, every single job will have its own requirements, right? And these requirements the worker must conform to, right? So say for example, uh, suppose we are in a structural engineer. Okay. A structural engineer's job. A structural engineer's job. He must know the code, highest codes. He must know the highest codes. He must know the uh, provisions in the code. He must know uh, basically structure designing and analysis. He should have a thorough idea of, about that. Okay. And and a person who is not well versed in that will not, cannot do that, right? So that is the requirement of the job. He should be well versed in this. Same way for a site engineer. A site engineer should know how to deal with the workers, right? He should be able to interpret what the site, uh, the structure engineer has drawn and given to him. Okay, so he must be able to un understand the drawings. He must be able to interpret it to the workers. So the workers may not know. Okay. Normally, what will happen is the the opposite. Workers will know good thing, uh, very well. They will be well versed in the thing because they have been doing the same job again and again. Okay, so it becomes the site engineer's job to explain to. Him. So he will say, okay, uh, we are going to cast the beam of this much length okay we are going to cast beam of 3 meter length so i need uh, like 12 mm rebars 12 mm uh, 16 mm rebars of this much length it should be cranked at this uh, this uh, angle at this length okay he see should be able to the give right you should be able to deal with the workers the workers may be from all over the country right now as you know we almost all north indian boys are coming in working on the site right we should be able to interpret the image, uh, interpret the drawings to them. So that's the requirement of the job. So we, uh, 
every job has the requirements and the workers or the employee should have to confirm so he has to abide right he has to abide to those work, uh, those requirements okay the job analysis is a study of these requirements okay the job analysis is the uh, study of these requirement and the factors which influence these requirements okay so we are not only considering the requirements we have to study about the requirement yes but we need to study about the factors which uh determines these requirements right so suppose if, for a site engineer dealing with human beings is important so one of the requirement we can say he must know hindi right because if a uh, cs now the workers know malayalam but if we in the site we a uh, site engineer should be able to communicate right so some so he should be able to so we can say he should be uh we may not say he should be well versed in hindi but he should he should be able to communicate in hindi right for us it's not a big issue because we have been learning my hindi from third standard or right so we must be able to understand we must be able to communicate right hindi and so that's a factor so that's a requirement and what is the factor influencing this requirement why do i say a site engineer should know hindi because the workers are coming from outside right the workers are coming from outside so they don't know the language so it's our, our job to it's the site engineer's job to make them work so he must be able to communicate in uh, hindi so in the language they know okay we can the so labor is a big issue for us for any project labor will be a big issue because getting good labor is a very big problem for us labor and materials right we know that in our house, house only we know uh, how the works are progressing right whenever we have a, getting the labor the uh, task itself so the labor uh, might be coming from north india he might be knowing only hindi so our job to learn hindi right so that is that is the job analysis is the study of these requirements okay? requirement is say for example knowing hindi and the factors which influence the requirement so what is the factor the labor are from north india right so that is job analysis now it is used to identify the qualities which a worker must have to do the job so by doing the analysis we know the requirements for a site engineer the requirement is he must have a practical knowledge right he must know sufficiently about the structural aspects okay so he structural aspect he should know then he should be able to communicate then he should have a basic knowledge about like how the work is carried out right so, uh, Do I, we are doing plastering. What is the amount of plastering we have to do? Right? So basic site knowledge he should have. So job analysis concentrates on the first one is performance standard. Okay, finding the expected output in terms of both quality and quantity. Right. So uh, performance standards means here we are measuring the output not only in terms of quantity but also quality. Okay, certain things we have to measure in terms of quantity. Certain we have to measure in terms of quality. Uh, because there will be two different jobs, right? So suppose uh, a painter, okay, an artist, a master, he he will be creating a masterpiece by taking one year or two years, okay? It will have its value. But similarly, we can print mass copies of some other paintings also. So in that, in the first case, we have to take the quality into consideration, and second case, we have to take the quantity into consideration. Both are paintings, but one is a masterpiece, one of kind. It will take. It will take time. In the second case, it is a uh, group. Right? So performance stand find the expected output in terms of both quality and quantity. Right? Next is work at work activities. Identify work. What tasks must be accomplished? Okay. What are the so what are the works of a site engineer? Okay. So he must be doing this. He must do this. We have we know what are the jobs of a site engineer. So he must oversee. The works he must oversee the concreting whether the mixing is done properly, right? Or else, if we are uh, buying the ready mix concrete, he should make a uh, cubes from the side and give it to testing to make sure that it is good. He must do a slump test, right? In the field itself, he must do a slump test and find whether it is good or not. Right? If it is having required consistency, and if he feels it is not up to the mark, he can reject reject it. Right? So, what are the works he has to do? So, identify the works. What he has to do, then work technologies, then make a note of the 
technology so, uh, sorry i made a spelling mistake there it's not t it's note making make a note of the technology so what and what can be incorporated right earlier uh, when we used to survey okay in movies you might have seen right or the first day you you should have, you would have done you had to use a cross staff you had to use a chain first day you, the first experiment in your uh, civil engineering life survey lab right you divide the area into triangles and trapeziums and you found, found out the area right you used a cross staff at all but now so that's okay again we will get the result but in a much quicker and much accurate manner we can get data from using a total station right so new technologies have come up and now even better has come up, right uh, in the last semester you learned about the, the gps okay and gps and uh, dgps okay? differential gps right so more and more new and new technologies are coming every day so we need to make sure that we are open to that right then the job context the job context means where we are working so identification of work condition so where is it where are we working whether we are working in a factory so uh see you used to say right the steel bars or the precast members precast members are prefabricated members are better because we are getting it in a closed factories we are getting it in a controlled condition we are preparing it so it will be lesser with the flaws and all we will say right you might have learned it earlier prefabricated structures in construction technology right so all these things so what is the work condition okay whether you are working in a inside a factory or whether you are working outside right the requirements are both different okay in the outside you have to take care of the elements also into consideration right whether if you have yeah, whenever you are ordering for cement you should take how much is the requirement okay how um, within how much days will we complete it what is the weather condition is there going to be a rain all these things have been answered where, where you work is an important thing then work schedule work schedule again work schedule is also important because we know how much time we will take okay because uh, we can decide we can divide our work by um within uh, like time schedule see sometimes a site engineer can leave the job at 8 o'clock 8 hour job he can leave at 5 o'clock suppose okay but in when a congregate is happening he has to stay yeah he, he has, sometimes he has to come early or he has to stay late so uh, when congregate is there his, his work will be for uh, 12 hours 14 hours or 16 hours even maybe right so congregate has to be done perfectly right you don't have it you will not get that redo so that will depend upon the work schedule so you need to create the schedule so what is the schedule uh so that that main problem what will happen with yeah ladies we add you, you might have seen okay more and more uh, site engineers are gen staff because they can stay late that's one factor for answering um gen for what site as site engineers, site engineers. so the ladies they, they come because of the so, so society itself okay that's the next thing social condition itself they have limitation now there are people who have, there are people who are working but it's a slow progress in that sense okay and compensation then how we are going to compensate them okay whether we are going to pay extra for the additional hours okay or else that's your part of your job you need to consider like that or within after you complete this project you will be promoted to the next so you'll be given off country stay like you'll be sent out the station out of the town to learn new things right? The, what is the compensation that has been considered then a personal requirement personal requirement identify the required skills uh education education experience training and other attributes required for the job okay so now we know what is job now next thing is we need to know what are the other requirements so what are the skills what are the skills you need like we said combination communication you should know the uh, site engineer should know how to deal with the people right it's education so he should have a uh, b-tech so that means we need a engineers in nature so we should have a b-tech degree then it's experience okay so site engineer you can have a fresher a newbie can do the job so it's a little bit of training so next is training and other attributes with that we can a new person can do the job but as a, a project manager of a project manager he should be someone who uh somebody who has much experience right so that has been considered 
so if experience training and other attributes has to be considered basically it's matching the person with the job right so in job analysis what we do is we study the requirements of a job and what are the uh, factors that influence the requirements okay on it concentrates on performance standards work activities work technologies job context person requirement and person requirement right Once we have analyzed the job, the second step is selection. Okay, making the selecting the person. Uh, selecting the job. Uh, sorry, first step is analyzing about the job, studying about the job. The second step is selecting the best the selection. Choosing the most suitable person for the current position or future positions from among candidates from within the organization or outside. Okay, so we know. We are having an opening. We need a person in this position. Okay, so I need to choose the best person. Okay, the best person for the, suppose the opening may be currently. I need the person to today itself. Okay, or I may need the person in one year. Okay, so I need to choose the correct person for that position. Okay, and from the candidates which are who are available within the company. Okay, who are working within the company, or it can be from outside. Okay. So, for example, in our restaurant, we said our restaurant, we had a plan of getting a new menu. Okay, a new menu. Like we are going to introduce Arabic dishes. Okay, Arabic dishes are going to introduce. So, I have an opening for a uh, chef, right? Uh, Arabic cook. I need an Arabic cook or well versed in Arabic dishes. So, I may be planning to start it immediately. Okay, maybe within a few days. Okay, or maybe I'm giving I'm giving you some time. Maybe. After six months, I'm gonna start. So both are there. so I have a current requirement is there. Maybe for a future requirement. So again, both in both cases, I need the chef with the uh, knowledge in Arabic cuisine, right? That has to be considered. So what can I do? I can select a person from my own family. So the other person, other cooks who are working under me, they I can choose from them. But if I cannot, I have to take from take someone from the outside. That is selection, right? So selection is the process of picking a best suited person for the organization requirements so it involves the rejection of unsuitable applicants also okay uh, recruitment recruitment proceeds selection process so uh, by recruitment we mean we are making sure that people know that we are having an opening and people are responding people are applying for the job and among the I, uh, selection means i am choosing the best that means when when i say i am choosing the best means i am rejecting the Unsuitable also. Okay, selection is having two two step two phases are there. I am choosing. That means I am rejecting the unsuitable candidates also. Okay, that has to be right. So what is the selection process? First one is obtaining job description and job specification. Okay, so we need to develop the job description. What is the uh, role he is going to do? So maybe for a site engineer, what is the role description of his job? Okay, what and all are supposed to do so it involves determination job title again so i am going to have a site engineer department in which job exits okay uh, now right so in which department i do i need the person okay what works are to be performed by him so like this i need to form a description about the job the next thing is specification specification provides the basis for the assessment of candidate so i will say for oh, this, this is the job I need. So these are the specifications I need. I should be like your mobile phone, right? Whenever you are buying a mobile phone, you have a certain specification, right? I need a camera of this, this MP cam I need. I need the screen size of this. I need a RAM of that size, expandable memory. So these are your specifications. So you are taking a mobile phone that meets your specification, right? So job specification provides a basis for the assessment of the candidate helps to distinguish between essential and desirable requirements for the job so there's two things one is essential okay that i must have there are certain things i must have and there are certain things that is desirable okay so i must have a person who is having btech degree in civil engineering that is my must okay with certain cgpa and marks and with certain knowledge okay but if he, if he have if he is having something extra extra knowledge okay he knows the uh, how to use the gps okay or he knows how to 
uh, work in certain situations they've got some experience in working in certain situations like that maybe in tunneling and all right these are desirable requirements so i have a desire if, if, if we have these requirements it is good but basically i need the person with a certain skill and the btech degree in civil engineering okay so that is essential requirement and desirable requirement okay so once i form the job description and job basically i am doing here is analysis first of all job analysis system okay we are saying it in some other in some other words so once i have uh, made the job specifications and description and specification next is application form okay so what happens normally what we do is we will send a uh, uh resume to the company okay so we see whether there is an opening this letter so what will happen company will be getting many resumes right so now what they will do they will give up they will give up the application form so application form is a uniform universal mechanism to screen the applicant to be called for an interview okay so they will be getting when in recruitment process they will be getting many resumes so they will give out the application form so application form will be used to get the information like education training work uh, work experience age marital status etc from the applicant so they will say okay we need an um, applicant for with the experience of 5 years or more okay that will be the condition but what we will look we are looking for a job so we will just simply send a resume okay so what uh, so once we get the application form they will say you have experience of 5 years or more then you are either you have to make yes or no okay if you don't have the experience of 5 years then you have to mark no so this condition can discourage the unsuitable applicants right so this will so we will stop here we we'll continue in the next class so please let me know if you have any doubts or else we'll move on to